there's sort of a mixed story about pandemics. You know Ebola and Zika, MERS and SARS, lots of fever, swine flu, bird flu. There's been more, more animal viruses jumping from animals to humans in the last 30 years than we have records of before. And that's worrisome. But much more worrisome than that is that the institutions that normally keep us safe are sort of AWOL. In the Ebola outbreak, you know, uh, Obama sent 3,500 American soldiers to West Africa. We spent billions of dollars because WHO failed in its job to protect us because it took six months to correctly identify what the disease was that was killing people in West Africa. So WHO is going to have a new director general in May, and I think it's going to go through a period of self-examination, and it's offline. Hmm. And I think this presidency, as far as pandemics, is offline. You're, hmm. you're not going to see public health, let hmm. alone pandemic preparedness, at the top of the priority list for this White House. And they fired the head of CDC, and they're cutting the Center budgets. Center for Disease Control. Center for Disease Control, or Centers for mm -hmm. Disease Control, actually. Uh, and uh, Trump is cutting the budget for public health and pandemic preparedness. There's a new Secretary General of the UN who just began on the 1st of January, really good guy, Portuguese guy, really good. But he's just getting started. So if you look at those agencies that normally keep us safe, the federal government, WHO, the UN, CDC, they're all offline. Mm. We've got a great head of the World Bank who's a doctor, mm. Jim Kim. Um, he'll be working really hard. But by and large, we have to have a safety net to protect us, to stop pandemics, to end the threat of pandemics. April 7th is World Health Day. It is also the 100th anniversary of the great influenza, the Spanish influenza, right. the 1917 to 1918 pandemic. One of my grandparents died in that, one of Gerich's grandparents died in that. I wonder how many other people know that in your, you know, in your genealogy, some of your relatives died from that because somewhere between 25 million and 100 million people died in that one year period and if you, Put that to today's numbers, you're talking about 75 to 300 million. If we had a pandemic one-tenth of that, one-hundredth of that, mm -hmm. it would bring humanity to its knees. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't be an airplane in the sky for six months. Who's going to get on a cargo boat with 300 people that, whose epidemiological status you don't know when there's no vaccine and no antiviral? I want us to stop the risk of pandemics. We know almost every, well, we know every step to take. We know how to do it. There will inevitably be outbreaks. There'll be viruses jumping from animals to humans. Outbreaks are inevitable, but pandemics are optional. We don't have to have them if we have the same public will to end them that we had to eradicate smallpox. And that's what I'm hoping that we can pull off next.